Hi guys, I'm Daniel. Before we get into the rope and chain, let's first go into some of the different tying methods you can use. In our system, and a lot of uh, other ninja families will know why we would tie the ropes different ways, okay? You'll notice that one of them has loose ends and the other one doesn't. First we'll get into the reason why you have them open, okay? One of the most basic reasons is how simple it is to tie a weapon to it, okay? On this end, you'll notice it's knotted. This can be used as a simulation when practicing for uh, the weighted end and in you know, actual field application for striking the whatnot. From there, we're also going to kind of go into some of the different spinning applications, but um, for now, just focus on tying the rope, because if you have an improper piece of equipment, you're, <laughs> you're getting off on the wrong foot to begin with, okay? So, start with that, get yourself a good piece of strong, sturdy rope, tie your knots in it, once you feel comfortable with it, you have a good comfortable length to practice with, watch my next video. Okay guys, let me add some specifics so that you understand. The reason for this knot is because not only when you knot up your ropes like this, it's easy to practice your techniques with. You can also do this without hurting yourself. This is a replacement for the chain. But with this, you're also going to learn how to apply chain weapons, okay? It's very important that you make it two strands and knot them. The reason is, if you're climbing, these work as a wrist catcher, something that uh, some organizations don't know about. You can tie your grappling hook to this end. You can also tie balls, chains, kunais even, okay? And that's why you want these loose ends. But let's first say you had a hook and you're climbing. You want these knots so that your hands also catch. On top of that, you can also put your feet into these holes so that you have support. And if you have failure of one rope, the other one holds it so that you don't completely fall. So it's good to have two ropes side by side, making it not only stronger, sturdier, but also has for your feet to catch and also for your hands to put in if you get desperate. And when you fall, it catches on the wrist, okay? That's one of the other reasons why you want to double chain or double rope and knot and use this as your basic chain and rope weapons when you're starting to learn Manriki and all the other good stuff, okay? Now, that's one style. The other style is this. It's the same thing. You take a rope, make it single, tie knots into it. It's very important you tie knots at the very end. The reason is, you can actually use just this as a weapon. Not only are these knots good for when you hit somebody, these knots, because they're hard, they also uh, act as a weapon. And when you knot it at the end, of course, when you whip and strike somebody, you're gonna hit them with a the knot, not with a rope, okay? And the knot has its own effectiveness. So, these are the two types of ropes you want to make for yourself when you're practicing what Daniel is going to show you. Uh, 